Hey guys, how's it going? So today I wanna to give you an update tour of our dahlia patch out here in the new cut flower garden. You can see right behind me all the growth. You can see some color. Now I got these in the ground on June 29th, which is about two months after I would have liked to have gotten them in the ground. We just didn't have our infrastructure set up yet. We didn't have water run to this area. So we were kind of just forced to wait unless I would have wanted to drag a hose all the way from our other garden out here. And I just wasn't willing to make that kind of time sacrifice. So I just waited and by the time I got the tubers in the ground, some of them had dried up. Some of them were kind of like so, so quality. I wasn't sure if we were gonna get growth and we've just had phenomenal luck with all of the germination out here and just with how healthy they've been. So we can see quite a bit of color, but even the ones that look mostly green have buds on them. So they're either in flower or almost in flower. I think the next couple of weeks will be really pretty out here because you can see here, like this one in particular, mostly green, but buds just everywhere just covering the whole plant. That's gonna be amazing here in a couple weeks. I also think we may have seen a little bit more upward growth on these if they were given a little bit more time to grow, at least by this point of the year. Some of these are naturally shorter. We went with the higher T posts because they're more versatile. I could use them for other things. Um, but I think some of the varieties would have been a little bit taller. And they still have some time, they might get there. If you watched our dahlia planting video, you might remember that we are using drip tape to irrigate out here, which I really like. Um, however, we started with the drip tape that has emitter holes every 12 inches to begin with, just for the dahlias. And about midway through, I just thought, you know what, these are not watering very well. Um, we were having to get the hose out and supplement water. So we went ahead and took all of that drip tape down and ran the drip tape that has the emitter holes every six inches. And it's been working like a dream Ever since then so that's probably what I'll stick with from now on in fact that's what we have in this entire space is the six inch drip spacing and it's working out really well so if we find a gap here there were a couple tubers that like I think there was one right here that didn't come up one that's really small but that's okay I can dig that and I can still grow it next year but you can see the drip tape right here this is what it looks like it's flat rather than round and you can send a lot more water, like um, you can run a ton more of the drip tape on a single zone than you can the regular drip tubing. And um, see the drip hole is right on the top right there. Oh geez. <laughs> Russell, where'd you come from? Opportunist, deluxe right here. Anyway, you have to make sure the drip hole is on the top. That's how it works. Uh, but it is a lot less expensive to do it this way as well. And then as far as our staking system, I really liked it. We got the five foot T posts, Aaron pounded them into the ground and then we've got like this white nylon string rope that we tied really tight. So we tied it off on one end and then came and looped around. And see, I looped around here. I'm not gonna touch it because there's a wasp there currently. And then we went all the way down to the end and then tied off. And we did two different runs of that. I thought I was gonna have to come add a third, but I think we're doing okay. And we honestly haven't had to use it very much. Let me find one where we've had to actually tie a dahlia off. And these dahlias have been through at least one windstorm that had gusts up to 70 miles an hour. And then last weekend we had a storm that lasted almost 24 hours with 50 mile an hour wind gusts. Ruined a lot of my sunflowers, but the dahlias are like, we don't care. <laughs> Maybe it's good they didn't get so tall. Okay, where, oh, where is a tied up dahlia? Oh, this makes sense. So this one kind of takes the brunt of the wind. So you can see here, if we look close, I got the twist ties that have a little foam wrapped around them. They come in a package. I got them down at the garden center. So you just kind of twist it around one side of the rope, around the dahlia, and then it just twists here. Really easy to reuse, really soft and nice on the plant so it won't wreck the stem. You can see there's another one right there. And as far as flowers go, dahlias are super easy. I mean, I know they look intimidating, but once you have those key infrastructure things in place, like a way to stake them, this is the easiest, but of course you're not gonna be doing this probably in a flower bed. Um, you'll probably be using bamboo stakes or something like that that looks a little bit like you don't see them <laughs> quite as much. It is a pain to have to individually stake. But this way is super easy. I mean, you've got your staking system in place, you've got your drip tape there, you've just got everything you need. And everything I've read about Dahlia says that they like a good rich soil. We didn't pay a ton of attention to the soil. I mean, we used an auger, Aaron drilled out all the holes, 
And then we went along with land and sea compost and biotone starter fertilizer, just a little bit in each one of the holes. We planted them and then about midway, maybe like a month and a half ago, we gave them a dose of flower tone. And that really, like I saw a huge surge in growth after that application. So I think in the end, our soil out here wasn't near as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The other thing about dahlias is that they do want to be pinched when they're um, up a little bit. I did not do that because all I was concerned about was getting the leafy growth to happen. Um, so I'll show you what happens if you don't pinch them. Uh, the first flower especially that you get is kind of like trapped down in the crotch of a couple other branches. Um, so those are really only good to float. And I've done that like I'll fill a ramekin with water and just kind of pop it down and let it lay flat. Um, yeah, I just wasn't as concerned with that this year. And then of course we'll be following up with videos later on on how to dig and store them. So now I think we should look at some flowers. I do have a little map I want to show you. So this is how they look. There's six rows. And this is the map starting with the one closest to my thumb was the one closest to us. And so basically like this. You can pause the video right here if you want to attempt to read my handwriting. I chicken scratched this one out this morning because I honestly forgot where I planted everything. And I ordered varieties from three different places. Eden Brothers, uh, I got a bunch from Flora Flower that they sent out, and then I got some from Home Depot. Um, I don't think I got any from the Garden Center. I think I missed out on the ones that they got. They don't typically bring in a lot anyway. Okay, so we probably won't look at every single one out here, but starting with this one, the Labyrinths, which are a gorgeous one, they're not quite open yet. This is the Cafe Con Leche mix. Isn't that gorgeous? I love that soft yellow in the center and the creamy white perfection right there. And it is a mix so that there are some that have a little bit more of an apricot blush to them. Anyway, just a few flowers on those so far. This one is called Holly Hill Lemon Ice. Now you will notice a little layer of dirt because, well, check this out. Look at that. See how powdery that is? When these poor flowers have to go through 50 mile an hour winds, they're bound to get a little bit covered with dust, but still gorgeous. Holly Hill Lemon Ice. Got some Natalie G's. I think that's what this is. I don't know, I'll have to Google it and make sure. Just starting to open. These are called brown sugar. And I am so surprised at myself, but these are one of my faves. I love this structure. Do they call these what, pom-pom? I don't know gorgeous like the design perfection in each layer is just incredible and look at how long the stems are even without pinching amazing then we've got the romantic mix which is supposed to be the rest of this row but it doesn't make sense i think maybe the romantic mix starts here and it's supposed to be like kind of a bridal you see like the cream and then you see this has got a little bit of pink in it. And then this one here looks like a cafe au lait. Oh, I think I'm gonna, nope, I didn't break it, sweet. <laughs> I think that one might stop somewhere right over here, but I can't find a tag for whatever this mix is called because they're all different. Really beautiful though. That almost has like an iridescent neon quality to it. Look at that, the honeybees. That one's beautiful. I like this one, it kind of looks wild but not like a cactus one, which I don't know if I like the cactus type as much. Look at that. That's like pumpkin color. Look at that color. Okay, I gotta go quick because they're revving up the machinery over there. We have our trees coming for our lane. We decided to do that project this fall. So we have some guys like leveling out the area. We're gonna seed some grass. And so they're working on that today. I was hoping to get done while they were on their lunch hour, but I was too slow. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cruise. Let's go to this one right here. So this is part of one that's called a pink mix. I think from Eden Brothers, so I think that's probably labeled right. And these are involved in the same mix right here. And then the rest of this aisle are all cafe LA's, which I've already cut several. Look at how gorgeous that is. <gasps> and this is what happens. So see how this one right here, this is a super short stem. When you pin pinch your dahlias, you will forfeit like this possible bloom, but you really can't do a whole lot with that bloom right there because of how short that stem is. But I mean, we could just look in here and there's cafe au laits at every different stage of bloom here. This third row right here is my Home Depot row. 
So I got two varieties called Bluebell and Snow Country. Bluebells are just starting. You can see this one is just starting to open. Not much other action on that variety. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe here. Oh yeah. Well, for crying out loud. Right there, look. Bluebell. And the Snow Countries are massive. Look at this, my hand versus this Dahlia. Oh, there was a bee in there. Ah, look at that. Just absolutely huge. This runs a really close race with the Cafe Olays to me. Fourth row, first little mix right here is called the Tender Mix. So you can see some light pink and a little bit darker pink. That one's really pretty. I love right here the underside of the leaves or the lower leaves how they have like a light margin there. And I think this is part of the same blend, the Tender Mix. Look how beautiful that is. I think I'm gonna cut that one today because isn't that perfect, that stem, to go out the side of a vase, like to drape. Then we've got Bridal Bouquet Mix, which I can't remember if it was supposed to have the deeper pink, but it's really beautiful. And then we've got one called Karma Chocolate. So you can see the difference in leaf color here. It's a darker leaf color. And look at the color of the blooms. That's a pretty amazing one. And then this one was the one labeled Linda's baby, which I posted a picture of and everyone was like, ah, that's not Linda's baby. <laughs> so I Googled it real quick and I'm like, you know what, you are right. So this one was labeled improperly. It's still really pretty. And honestly, it doesn't matter because I'm not gonna be selling these. So I'll just, I'm calling this one Pink Perfection. And that's what I'll label it when I dig the tubers. Hopefully there's not another, there's probably another one named that. Oh well, didn't matter. And then the rest of this uh, aisle right here, or row rather, is called Snowbound. You can tell I really like white. This one has a little bit more of a kind of, not fluffy, but a little bit more of a wild appearance than the Snowbound, or Snow Country rather. Fifth row, let's see what we've got here. I believe this one's called Terracotta right here. This is one of the ones from Florette. In fact, most of these right here are from Florette. Some of them aren't in bloom yet, but that's really gorgeous. Perfect for this time of year. This one is called Bishop of Oxford. Again, we've got a nice dark leaf on this one and more of a single flower. Then we've got Dinner Plate Pastel Mix, which the white ones are blooming so far. We should have some lighter pinks in there. And then we've got anemone mix right here. So these have more of a pronounced middle section. You can see that. And then the petals turn downward there. And then in this sixth row, I've got white gladiolus called Alaska, which you can see they're just, this one is taking longer than the lemon drop over there. But I did notice I've got one stem right here that's starting to bloom. Look at all those, oh, so fun. And then these are called Lemon Drop, which I have cut quite a number of them for arrangements already. And some of them are just gonna be out here to be pretty for now, unless I get around to, I don't know, they're kind of starting to peter out at this point. And then this one I believe is called Razzmatazz. And then we've got the Holly Hill Miss White, which I think is one of my favorite little pom-pom type right here, pure white, although I was noticing that they're starting, some of them are getting kind of this blush of lavender right in the center. And I wonder if that color intensifies with temperature, like if it drops a little bit. It'll be interesting to watch these. And these are also from Florette. You're just all over, Russell. So now I think I'm just gonna cut a few of these and create an arrangement. I might cut some other things to go with them. Um, what I have read up on Dahlia is I have pretty good luck with them lasting for not really more than a week. It's usually a week or under. Um, but you want to pick them when they're about three quarters of the way open, not all the way open. And you can also look at the back of the flower. Let me show you. Like for example, these two flowers right here. If you look at the back of this one, it looks pretty nice, like the flower petals are still really fresh looking. The back of this one, you can clearly see, you know, some deterioration there. So this one, of course, it doesn't look as good either, uh, but it won't have near as long a vase life as something like this. And another example, something that looks like this with still some petals that have yet to come open. Looks really good, feels nice and firm on the back will last longer than something like this that's fully opened. And here's another example. You can see several blooms in varying stages of openness. This one right here is almost open, but it's still got some tightness around there. The back of the bloom still looks really firm, really nice. 
this one see how much more open that is if you look at the back it looks completely different all the petals are open all the way down so that one will not last as long as this one here color's not as vibrant either I was also reading on Florette's website which if I ever have a specific cut flower question I usually check there first because she's got some really good information but it said that to get the longest vase life you can either put the stems right after you cut them in a vase that has hydrator in the water which I don't know a lot about or you can sear the stem ends you put them down in 160 to 180 degree water and then you let them cool for an hour um, and then she says five to six days base life but I feel like I get usually that out of mine anyway so I've got my buckets of water I've got my Falcos let's do some cutting and then I'll take them to the house Is the finished product I'm really happy with how it turned out so many different colors and textures and all of them grown either from seed or tuber which makes me especially proud so first off kind of starting with the vase I have this wood bowl it's not watertight so I did have to line it with plastic I used just a garbage sack and in that case I typically do use foam I usually try to stay away from it and I use a metal frog or a chicken wire frog uh, but in this case, just to protect the plastic from being ripped and water making it through and then wrecking my surface and the bowl, uh, I use foam. And it does help with these heavy blooms, kind of keep them in place. But I've got a couple of Cafe Au Lait Dahlias there. These are a Rudbeckia I started from seed inside called Sahara. Aren't they gorgeous? And then this one, I can't remember all the names, you guys, already, and I just showed them to you. How sad is that? But we've got some bachelor's buttons in here, some Cosmos. These were both uh, seeded mid-July. There are some apple blossom snapdragons started inside early this spring and they're still blooming out there. Terracotta celosia. This looked like the most sad plant I've ever seen when I transplanted my little starts out in the garden and then they started to look worse and worse. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they started to grow and they are just gorgeous and the perfect color for this arrangement i think so i just used two stems i've got a big stem there and a stem here and i kind of used that as my uh, base structure kind of um, and then i did start with the cafe la i think I, that was the first one i put in because that was like the big big one that had the shortest stem so i knew it had to come out the front i also have some peas these are called early gray sugar both the blooms and the leaves off of the plant these are actually a bearing edible pea plant I started mid-July out there and I just love that they bloom pink instead of white. Like isn't that so pretty? I should kind of pop those out there. So I think the structure of this one turned out really fun. Loose but structured at the same time if that makes sense. And backing up I will show you what the ground looks like. So out of all three buckets full of flowers all I was left with was really like this isn't a usable stem of cosmos i cut off the blooms off that one i have one sort of stem of peas and then i did cut some ruby moon hyacinth beans because they've got really neat texture right here but it was too much like using these along with the big bold dahlias i think it would have kind of made it look messy 
we got enough going on right there. So I'll just take this inside and just make sure I keep it topped up with water every day. And because the dahlias only last typically about a week, maybe a little bit shy of a week, I will probably not worry about switching out the water completely. If you've got long flowers with the long base life, it is a good idea at least once a week to dump all the water, put fresh in, recut the stems and put the flowers back in. You do get a longer shelf life out of those or vase life rather. Um, but with this, whatever is still looking good at the end of the week, I will probably take those out and use them in another arrangement or create a smaller arrangement with those. But it's just so fun to go out and pick things that you have started yourself from seed, not even from like, like plants that I bought at a store. They're tubers or seed. I don't think any of them were plants. No, all seed. And that is pretty much it for this video. I just really wanted to get out there and show you what the dahlias look like at this point in the year. Um, it's looking pretty nice weather-wise for the next 10 days at least. I think in about two weeks we'll have an amazing color show out there. So long as we don't get any weird cold snaps, which it doesn't look like we're gonna get that, I think we'll get quite a bit more bloom time out of them. And I have a ton left to cut out there. I mean, when you actually start counting up how many blooms are out there ready to cut, I can make quite a number of bouquets. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next one. Bye.